Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome at last to our course, Mechanical Behavior of Materials. So we have already discussed about two strengthening mechanisms, precipitation strengthening and dispersion strengthening, and the second one, solid solution strengthening. Today, we are going to discuss about drain boundary strengthening, okay? So here I have shown an optical micrograph of uh, of a polycrystalline uh, alloy, okay? So you can clearly see here drain boundaries. So these are your drain boundaries. Okay. Now, why do we see drain boundary between two drains? So here I have shown on the right side schematic where you have drain one on the left side and drain two on the right side. And what you can see here is a change in the orientation, right? So orientation, changes, from drain one to drain two. And you have a drain boundary here. So this is your drain boundary. Okay, so what you see, you have an orientation here, something like this, right? This is your orientation, but here it is in this direction. It changes. So there is an angle here, right? So the orientation between the two drains, it is changing. And that's why you are going to see a boundary between the two drains and that boundary is called drain boundary. Now this drain boundary is also contributing towards the strengthening of a given alloy system. And we are going to learn about this particular concept, why drain boundary is contributing towards the strengthening, what makes it, uh, you know, what makes it um, uh, suitable to increase the uh, strength of a given alloy system, okay. So here, I have shown a uh, dislocation, and then you can also see two drains. So we have uh, drain one, then drain two, slip plane, drain boundary. So we have a dislocation because dislocation movement needs to be restricted so that we can increase the strength of the alloy and that is the crux of all strengthening mechanisms. We have discussed that before, okay? So what is happening now that, suppose this dislocation is moving on the slip plane and reaches to drain boundary, right? So what it says, it has to change the path now, isn't it? Because the orientation has completely changed from drain A1 to drain 2, right? That is point number one. And second, the drain boundary it itself has an atomic disorder, right? So it there is a discontinuity of the slip plane also from one drain to another. And this leads to the strengthening of the alloy because of the changing orientation between the two drains. So strengthening occurs. due to point number one, a dislocation passing 
into drain two from drain one will have to change its direction of motion. Okay, why? Because there is a crystallographic misorientation. So due to crystallographic misorientation. Okay, that is point number one. And point number two is the atomic disorder within a drain boundary region will result in a discontinuity of slip plane from one drain to another. Discontinuity of slip plane from one drain to another. That means drain one to drain two. So when a dislocation moves and it reaches towards the drain boundary, right? It sees that the slip plane direction has changed. So it was like this, now it is like this, okay? So the slip plane direction has changed. That is number one. And it has to also change the direction of motion, isn't it? So these two factors lead to the strengthening in the alloy. And this is happening because there is a changing orientation of the alloy, okay? Now, what will happen when a uh, dislocation is near the drain boundary and it is not able to change its position, right? Change the slip, slip plane. It is not able to tra traverse through the drain boundary. It is going to pile up at the drain boundary. So let's discuss about what is called pile up. So pileup of dislocations, okay? So if dislocations are not able to traverse, to obstacles such as a drain boundary in this case. What will happen? It will lead to piling up. Pile up of dislocations at GBs. So drain boundaries, right? So, so what is happening? A dislocation is coming. So let me draw a drain boundary here. So suppose you have a drain boundary. So this is your drain boundary. So I will write GB for drain boundary. Becomes easier, okay? So you have a GB here and then a slip plane. A dislocation is moving on a slip plane and it reaches towards to the drain boundary. It reaches at the drain boundary. Now it is not able to traverse through the drain boundary. So it, it cannot cross. So it will be staying there, right? Now suppose, so this is say dislocation number one. Now this is dislocation number two. A second dislocation is now moving, 
right, on the same slip plane, and then it also reaches towards the drain boundary, right? But what will happen? The first dislocation is going to repel the second dislocation. And mind it, this is happening when there is an applied stress, right? So you have an applied stress, and that's why dislocation is moving, right? So first dislocation is already at the drain boundary. Now second dislocation is moving along this direction. As soon as it reaches towards the first dislocation, the first dislocation is going to repel the second dislocation, right? And second dislocation now will be at equilibrium due to the applied stress and the stress due to dislocation number one. So they are going to maintain a certain distance here. Okay. Now let's see what happens when we have third dislocation. So again, the same drain boundary. Slip plane. So we already have dislocation number one, then dislocation number two. Now a third dislocation is coming. So we have dislocation number three and somewhere here you have source. Source of dislocation which is ejecting dislocations continuously on this slip plane. And because of the applied stress here, dislocations are moving on the slip plane, okay? So the third dislocation is, dislocation is moving along this direction. Now what will happen as soon as it reaches to say this position nearby dislocation one and two, the third dislocation sees a stress field because of the applied stress and the uh, one and second dislocations, they are going to repel the third dislocation. So again, third uh, dislocation will be at equilibrium position because of the applied stress and the repel, uh, repelling stress of one and two, okay? So what will happen? The third dislocation will come and then it will also occupy a position, something like this. So what you are seeing, that the distance between first and second dislocation is lower than the distance between second and third dislocation. Now the fourth dislocation will come and it will also be somewhere like this, okay? So now this distance, if I mark this as say X1, this is say S2, let's say S2, three and X1, two, and this is S3, four, so you can clearly see that S34 is greater than S23, then greater than X12, okay? So as you move away from the drain boundary, the distance between the dislocation increases. And this is happening, why? Remember, whenever dislocation two comes, it sees the repulsion only from dislocation number one, okay? So there will be some distance. Now, when the third dislocation comes, it will see a repulsion because of a combination of one and two. So it will have slightly higher repulsion stress compared to what was observed by dislocation number two. Okay, so it is going to maintain a slightly higher distance. Now when dislocation four comes, you are going to see, uh, this dislocation going to see the repulsion stress because of a combination of one, two and three. So there will be another uh, larger distance between dislocation number three and dislocation number four. So what you see that these dislocations are actually piling up in front of the drain boundary, okay? And that's why we call, uh, call this phenomena as piling up of dislocation at an obstacle. In this case, the obstacle is drain boundary, okay? So we can write, that dislocations piled up against the obstacle, and in this case, it is drain boundaries. They are going to produce a back stress. So when the dislocation two comes, dislocation one, which is already there in the pileup, it is going to produce a back stress on dislocation two, okay? Similarly, when dislocation three comes, 
both dislocation one and two, they are going to produce combined back stress on dislocation number three. And this back stress is actually, it is opposing the dislocation motion. So the, all the pile up dislocation, they are going to produce back stress to oppose the motion of any additional dislocation. Okay, that is point number one. Point number two is dislocation. Will be tightly packed together near head or near drain boundary. And as you move away from the drain boundary, they will be widely spaced. As one moves away from the drain boundary, the distance between dislocations increases. Okay? That means they are widely spaced. widely spaced, right? And this is happening towards the source. Okay, so you can clearly see here, if I talk about this four dislocations here, okay? So uh, near the dislocation, uh, near the drain boundary, you can see dislocation one and two, they are tightly spaced. And as you move away from the uh, drain boundary, you, are see, you can see that the dislocations are widely spaced and your source is here, okay? So there'll be N number of dislocations. Right, it's not only one, two, three, four. There, there will be lots of dislocations which are going to be piled up at the obstacle. This obstacle in this case is drain boundary. And mind it, the dislocations are moving because you have already uh, applied a stress. So there is a application of stress also. And because of that dislocation is moving on the slip plane. Okay. Now, let me again draw this pile up. So this is your GB. So I will give you one uh, formula now. So this is a slip plane. And then we have lots of dislocations and we have to now maintain the distance also. So something like this. Okay. So it is increasing as you move away from the drain boundary and somewhere here you are going to have an net dislocation. This is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So n number of dislocations, they are getting piled up at the drain boundary and the applied stress is tau. Okay. And the distance I am measuring from the drain boundary. And I will tell you what is I here, okay? So you have all these edge dislocations. They are uh, on the same slip plane, right? So the general formula for edge dislocation, the force between two edge dislocation, we can write as GB squared by two pi one minus mu X, S square minus y square divided by s square plus y square whole square okay so y is zero here because we are talking about the same slip plane and two dislocations those who are interacting they are on the same slip plane so y becomes zero so force in this case we can write as gb square by two pi one minus mu s cube by s four or finally, GB square by 2 pi 
1 minus mu into 1 by x. So, in this particular pileup case, it depends, the force between two dislocation depends upon the x value, right? Distance between these two dislocation. Okay. So, now I have already mentioned that each dislocation in this pileup as shown above, is under equilibrium. Okay. So if I consider dislocation number three, it is under equilibrium because of what? Because of the applied stress and then interaction between all the dislocations in the pileup. So if I talk about say dislocation number three here, if I just choose this one, so you, you have, so this is dislocation number three. So you have applied stress tau. Then you have again stresses because of the dislocations which are present on the slip plane on the left side of the dislocation that will have the same direction as the applied stress. Then there'll be repulsion from zero, one and two dislocation that will be on the opposite side. Okay, so dislocation number three is under equilibrium because of two effect of applied stress. Okay, and then stresses due to the other dislocation in the pileup. Okay, so now let's assume that uh, this all dislocations are of H character in the parallel. So if I want to understand the force on a particular dislocation, so the resulting force acting on the ith dislocation, we can obtain, or we can, since this is in equilibrium, right? So we can write this as tau b minus sigma j equal to zero to j equal to n, i is not equal to j, and then gb square divided by 2 pi 1 minus mu and then x. So xi minus sj. And since this is in equilibrium, it will be 0. Okay. So a particular dislocation, if you see, I was talking about number 3 here, right? So this particular dislocation, number 3. This is under uh, stresses of applied stress and then the stresses due to the other dislocation. And this is un, in uh, under equilibrium, uh, dislocation number three, right? So the forces on dislocation number three should be zero, okay? So now because of the applied stress, the force on the dislocation will be given by tau b, okay? And the interaction forces be, uh, on uh, uh, between this dislocation number three and other dislocations will be given by this summation. Now, the combination of these two should lead to zero because dislocation number three is under equilibrium. Okay, and you can calculate this. Okay, so if you say consider, let's see, I have a dislocation uh, GB here. And say we are just considering dislocation one and dislocation two. Okay, only two, one dislocation in the pileup. So here it will be now zero and one. Okay, so it will start with one. So,
so zero and one. Okay. So now, if I want to calculate what is the force on uh, first dislocation, so tau b. So I can write this equation. This equation will become tau b minus summation here. Okay. So j equal to zero. And I is not equal to J, so I here is one because we are talking about the I here dislocation, and here I is equal to one, the first dislocation. So this will be G B square divided by two pi one minus mu X I. That means X one minus J equal to zero to n. N is equal to one here, so it can go to maximum one. So X one minus S zero, and second term will be zero. S one minus X one that will be zero any. So we, uh, uh, that cannot be counted. I is not equal to J. Okay, so this is the equation for I at this dislocation. Similarly, you can calculate for dislocation number two. So or say you have now added another dislocation, dislocation number two, and now you want to calculate what is the force on dislocation number one. You can use the same equation. So you are going to have tau b because of the applied stress. Then you are going to have a repulsion force from dislocation number zero. So if I have number one here, then number two, and number zero here. Okay. So on number one, if I want to calculate, so you are going to have tau b. In this direction, because of the applied stress. Now, because of the dislocation two, you are going to have another force from dislocation number two, and then from zero, you are going to have force in this direction. And summation of all this should be zero because one is in equilibrium. And if you do that, if you use this particular equation on the top, you can solve this equation very nicely. Okay, and remember, n is the number of dislocation in the pile up. So this is the generalized equation, this one, for uh, to, uh, resulting force on a higher dislocation. If you have n number of dislocations in the pile up. Okay. Now at the leading dislocation, the first dislocation in the drain boundary here. So I'm talking about this particular dislocation. Okay. So what are the forces there now? You have uh, forces from the dislocations in the pileup. So you have lots of dislocation here. And it's number of dislocation, right? And then you are also applying tau. So on the leading dislocation in this region, you have a combination of stresses because of the applied stress as well as repulsive stresses from all the dislocations which are in the pileup okay now what will happen this will lead to a very high stress concentration in this region at the leading dislocation isn't it okay so uh, the leading dislocation in the pileup okay it will have stresses due to other dislocations in the pileup and also Applied stress, right? Stress due to applied stress, and all of them are acting on the same direction, right? Okay. So what will happen? This will lead to a very high stress concentration. Okay. So this will lead to high. Stress concentration 
at the region of leading dislocations okay so now what can happen if you have a very high stress concentration two things can happen one the yielding can happen on the other side of the dislocation that means you can generate new dislocations on the other side of the dislocation and that other dislocation uh, other side of the drain and that uh, drain can yield that is point number 1 so if you have drains here and say you have piled up of dislocations and at the leading dislocation here you have locked a high stress concentration okay so what can happen this particular drain that has not yielded yet because of the high stress strain concentration in the leading dislocation here you know dislocation source such as frankfurt source can activate in the drain 2 if i name as drain 2 and drain 1 here so yielding can occur in drain number 2 you can have nucleation of dislocations that is point number 1 and second instead of the uh, yielding of the second drain you can initiate cracks at the drain boundary here at this point okay so you can nucleate the cracks so these two things can happen if you have a high stress concentration at the leading dislocations because of the combination of applied stress as well as stresses due to other dislocations in the pileup okay so this will lead to two points point 1 yielding can occur on the other side of the drain boundary or say in this schematic here drain 2 okay so you are going to see nucleation of dislocations that is point number 1 and second you can see nucleation of crack at the drain boundary okay and again this is happening because you have high stress concentration at the leading dislocation because of the pile up of dislocations at the drain boundary okay now what is the value of that high stress concentration we are talking about and that value was calculated approximately to be tau b and tau b sorry tau a where n is your number of dislocations in the pile up okay and tau a is your applied result shear stress okay so the tau what i was mentioned before now it is tau a and that is what that is resolved shear stress on a particular slip plane okay so if you have a drain boundary and then you have lots of pile up of dislocations so the stress concentration or the stress value which is tau star here at the leading dislocations because of the applied stress and uh, dislocations in the pile up can be given by n multiplied by the applied resolved shear stress so what is happening it is actually uh, multiplying with the number of dislocations in the pile up with the applied resolved shear stress okay so this
derivation was introduced by okay and so tau star this is stress at the leading dislocation okay due to presence of other dislocations plus applied stress both and that's how you are getting the stress concentration so overall what you are seeing the effect of n dislocations at the pile up is to create a stress which is n times greater than the applied stress isn't it so overall you can say the effect of n dislocations in the pile up is to create a stress at the leading dislocation which is n times greater than the tau a and with tau a is applied stress applied resolves a stress because we are talking about the slip plane on the slip plane shear stress okay so if you have n number of dislocations you are going to increase the stress at the leading dislocation which will be n times uh, applied resolve shear stress okay now you have to also realize that uh, all these dislocations which are piled up at the drain boundary they are also going to apply back stress at the source so if you have again gb here and lots of dislocations and suppose you have a source here say fractured source which are generating dislocations continuously okay so all these dislocations in the pile up here right they are going to apply back stress on the frank ridge sources itself right so this doesn't mean that you know frank ridge source can generate uh, dislocation continuously there will be certain number of dislocations uh, distance generate because of the back stress from the dislocations in the pile up okay so how many dislocations you can have in the pile up there is a restriction and that number is given as n equal to l pi tau a by alpha gb okay and where tau a is resolved shear stress Okay. Alpha is geometrical constant. And it is given as one for screw dislocations. Or one minus mu. for edge dislocation b is your bulges vector okay and l is the length of the pile up okay l is length of the pile up 
that means say if the pile up is only up to this point so we will call it as a length typically it will be from the source okay so due to back stress you can generate only certain number of dislocations let me write down that also due to back stress from the piled up dislocations only certain number of dislocations generation okay and that is given by n and n is given by this equation here okay so now you know the number of dislocations which can be piled up when you have applied stress of tau a and length of the pile up is given by l so i can write what is the length of pile up from this particular equation on the top that will be given as alpha n gb by pi tau a so this is the length of the pile up okay now suppose the dislocation source is at the center of the drain so you have this say, drain and here is your flank resource okay so length of the pile up of dislocation so this is your pile up of dislocation so this length l in this case can be given as d by 2 where d is your drain size okay so we are assuming that the source which is generating the dislocations on that particular slip plane which is leading to finally the pile up of dislocation that source is sitting at the center of the drain okay so the pile up length l will be given as d by 2 where d is your drain size so i can write this as d by 2 equal to alpha n gb by pi tau this is another equation okay and as uh, assumption here is that the frank rate source okay or the source which is generating dislocation is sitting at the center okay so now suppose uh, you have reached to uh, drain boundary here so you have reached to drain boundary dislocations and now you want this dislocation to just traverse through the drain boundary so that will also require some amount of stress isn't it if you want to traverse this uh, dislocations not drain boundary if you want to traverse this dislocations through the drain boundary you require some critical stress value to overcome that particular barrier so if i assume that tau c is that critical stress which is required to overcome this particular barrier right we can write an equation so if tau c is the critical stress required to overcome the gb okay obstacle so in this case obstacle is gb okay and this uh, overcome gb obstacle that means dislocations in the pile up is, are able to traverse through the drain boundary okay so dislocations in the pile up are able to traverse through ring boundaries okay then i can say that if i consider the leading dislocation what was the stress at the leading dislocation n tau uh, tau a okay so n tau a has to be greater than equal to tau c 
So if the stress at the leading dislocation is higher than the critical stress required to overcome the drain boundary for these dislocations, these dislocations can actually burst from the drain boundary through the drain boundary. And that relationship will be given by this particular equation. It has to be minimum tau C. So it is greater than equal to tau C. Okay. Now N we know we use this formula on the top. So N we can write as D pi tau A divided by two alpha GB. That is N from this particular equation we are using. And then tau A is already there, equal, greater than equal to tau C. Okay. And then we can write tau A square is greater than equal to root over 2 alpha GB tau C divided by pi. And D I am taking out, it will become D to the power minus half. Uh, the square will not be there okay. because I have already taken square root on the right hand side. So if I want to move dislocations through the drain boundary, the applied stress should be this much. Okay, it is a function of diameter of the drain size. And again, remember, we are assuming that the Frankfurt source is at the center of the brain. Okay? So we can overall write this as tau A greater than equal to tau naught plus K d to the power minus half, where K is this particular constant. So this is your K. Okay, and we have added uh, tau naught because of the friction stress in the lattice. That also needs to be overcome, right? Even if you don't have drain boundaries, the friction stress, which is pile stress, that has to be overcome if you want to move the dislocation. Okay? So tau naught is added to take into account. the friction stress needed to move our dislocation. Okay. So overall, you are getting this particular equation. And you know, you will see eventually that fault pitch relation is also given by this equation almost this equation where we are replacing tau with sigma, okay? So, hall pitch theory. So whenever we talk about drain boundary strengthening, this particular theory will be always discussed about. Okay, so what is whole pitch equation, et cetera, et cetera. It gives a very nice description or nice relationship between the strength and the drain size. Okay, and remember the drain size is related to drain boundary. Okay, so in a given volume, if you have larger drain size, the drain boundary density will be smaller. Okay. So, Hall and Pitch. Both are scientists. They postulated that dislocations can burst through drain boundary. That is what we have discussed in the previous session also. Okay. And to do that, you require large number of dislocations in the pileup so that you have large stress concentration, which can overcome tau C, which is a critical stress required, right? So valid for large number of dislocations in a pileup.
Okay, and we know tau a is greater than equal to tau naught plus t d to the power minus half. So this is the genesis of Hall-Pitch relation, and this is what Hall-Pitch actually postulated. Later on, what happened? Cottrell came, and he proposed another theory. So what? What was the proposition here? So you know he mentioned that it is virtually impossible for dislocations to burst through the boundaries. Okay. Instead, what will happen since you have a stress concentration at the leading dislocation in the pile up, they are going to activate dislocation sources in the adjacent grain, such as planted source. Okay. So that is what they proposed, and they also gave a formula for that. So it is virtually impossible for dislocations to burst through grain boundaries. So instead of bursting of dislocation, you are trying. You will have yielding of dislocations, uh, yielding of grains, uh, neighboring grains because of the nucleation of dislocations or say activation of Frankfurt source in the neighboring grain. So the stress concentration produced. By pile up in one drain activates dislocation source in the adjacent drain. Okay, so if you have say a drain, and you have planetary source here, FR source, you then have pile up of dislocations, something like this. Okay, so in the neighboring drain, okay, so somewhere here, say you are activating. Planetary source. So, if it is drain number one, this is drain number two. Because of the stress concentration in the leading dislocation, you are activating a planetary source in the neighboring drain, say at a distance of r from the drain boundary. So, this particular distance here is say r. Okay. So, the stress to activate. The planetary source in the neighboring drain This was given by Cottrell. Okay, tau a should be greater than equal to tau naught plus two. Tau c r to the power half d to the power minus half. So almost similar to what we just saw. Instead, you have this term here, but it is also related to diameter of the drain. Okay, so whether it is Cottrell theory or Hall-Pitch theory, we just learned both are related to diameter of the drains, and it says that increasing the drain size. Will require lower amount of stress for the plastic deformation. Okay, that means if you want to increase the strength of the alloy, you have to reduce the grain size, and that is what Hall-Pitch relations discuss.
all pitch relation. So what is this relationship? Yield strength, yield strength follows all pitch relation for almost, you know, most of the materials. And this relationship is given as sigma y equal to sigma naught plus k divided by root d. Okay. Where sigma y is your yield strength. Of poly crystalline sample. Sigma naught is your frictional stress for dislocation movement. Frictional stress for dislocation movement and D we have discussed this. This is drain size. Okay. So what it predicts, if you reduce the drain size, sigma y is going to increase, right? And that is the drain boundary strengthening concept. So if you want to increase the strength of a given alloy system, where you say you cannot change the alloying elements. So solid solution strengthening, you cannot modify. And suppose that particular alloy system is also not able to give you precipitate. So precipitation strengthening is out of uh, question. So one of the ways to increase the strength of that particular alloy system is to use drain boundary strengthening concept, where if you reduce the drain size, then you are going to increase the strength of the material. And that is what all pitch relation is all about. Okay. So decreasing the drain size will lead to increasing sigma y. So the more you decrease the drain size, they will be incrementing sigma y. Okay. But this is not valid in nanometer range. That is called inverse hall pitch relation, but we will not go into that in this particular course. So if I plot say sigma y versus root d, suppose you take an uh, alloy and you varied the uh, drain size. In, in that particular. So you took different sample, you did some heat treatment and you are varying the drain size. So you in one sample, you got D1, in another sample, you got D2 and so on. And then you also did tensile test and you figure out what is the yield point, okay? Or sigma y here. So you can nicely plot something like this, okay? Where slope is going to be. So this is uh, one by root D, huh? Or say d to the power minus half. So slope is going to be k and this is going to be sigma naught. Okay, so it's y equal to ms plus c. So h here is d to the power minus half. So uh, m or slope here is k, which is a constant. And then uh, c here, the intercept here is sigma naught. This is what hall pitch relation is all about. Okay. And remember, hall pitch relation is not a universal law. It is valid for a certain grain size range. If you go to a nanometer size range, very, very small grains, then this relationship is not going to be valid. But in most of the engineering alloys, we are talking about three micron meter size of range. So we typically tend to use hall pitch uh, relationship for most of the engineering materials okay so in this lecture we have discussed the details about uh, drain uh, size strengthening or drain boundary strengthening 
So we have till now completed three types of strengthening mechanisms for uh, precipitation strengthening or dispersion strengthening, then solid solution strengthening and drain size strengthening. So in the next uh, session, we will discuss about strain hardening okay, or word hardening. You have some little idea about it when Professor Sashan Sethar discussed with you uh, in uh, about the tensile term, okay, but we will uh, discuss about uh, the, this particular concept in more detail in the next lecture. Thank you.